Pictures can be powerful devices of communication when their composition allows the photographer to tell the right story. For example, this is an image of a woman in front of a rusty bridge. This is the same scene and the woman is standing in the exact same position. However, the composition has been changed so the roller coaster in the background is more emphasized. Photographers use different image compositions to emphasize different aspects of the scene. For a given scene, two important parameters that control the image composition are the camera position and the focal length of the lens. The interplay of these parameters affects the resulting image in fundamental ways as can be seen here. This image was captured using a short focal length lens of 16mm while the photographer was standing close to the person in the foreground. Since a short focal length lens provides a wide field of view, this image captures large portion on the background. Furthermore, because the camera is close to the subject, there is more perspective distortion on the foreground. On the other hand, switching to a longer focal length lens and moving the camera away from the scene to compensate for the magnification of the foreground subject, we get a very different composition of the exact same scene. Here, most of the background is cropped out and the rusty bridge in the background is magnified. Also, because the camera is further away, the image of the woman is not distorted and appears flatter. Thus, changing camera position and focal length allows us to change the image composition. Traditionally, the photographer needs to mentally visualize the desired picture, select the capture parameters to produce it, and finally take the photograph, thus committing to a particular composition which cannot be changed later on. Furthermore, the range of compositions are limited to what is possible to capture using a physical camera. Hence, it is impossible to capture a large portion of the background and an undistorted foreground in the same image. We propose to change this paradigm with a new framework we call computational zoom, which allows a photographer post-capture control on the sense of depth of a scene, the relative magnification of objects at different depths, and the amount of perspective distortion. We take as input a stack of pictures by moving the camera into the scene without changing the focal length of the lens. Now we show an example of the type of post-capture control our method offers. The visualization on the right represents the projection mapping used to synthesize the image. Starting with this image, we first synthesize images that would remove the perspective distortion on the foreground object while keeping its size fixed. This however crops the background. We can rectify this by synthesizing multi-perspective images where the foreground is imaged using long focal length and the background using a short focal length to capture as much background as possible. We could further manipulate the image where the composition of the foreground overlaid with red and green is fixed and the background marked in blue is pulled closer. Our framework enables the synthesis of images where rays of light could bend in the scene and hence allow new image compositions that are plausible but not possible to capture using a physical camera. A stack of images captured at different depths from the scene represent single perspective projections of the scene. Our approach combines these single perspective images and synthesizes a multi-perspective image. We propose an image-based modeling and rendering approach to synthesize multi-perspective images. First, we estimate camera positions using our standard structure from motion software. Next, we estimate dense depth maps for each input image using our proposed multi-view stereo approach. Our approach better handles the images captured by moving into the scene. Finally, we propose a novel approach that uses the captured images along with the dense depth maps to synthesize images under multi-perspective camera projections. More details about our algorithm are in the paper. We now show a few results of the proposed computational zoom framework. 